In today's video, we unbox the classic Mordheim City of the Damned starter set from way back in 2002. Well, hi folks, this is Lee from skirmishwargames.com. Welcome to the channel. I'm here with Lynn. Hello. And Lynn, do you know what we're doing today? We get to finally open Mordheim. We get to open Mordheim here. So uh, this is an unopened box set from 2002. Now Mordheim, I think, has been around since about 1999. There is a uh, hole here in the box. So once we open it, we're going to try to restore it a little bit. But uh, this is still in the original shrink wrap. So today we're going to open up uh, this box of uh, Mordheim City of the Damned, talk a little bit about the game and our plans for playing the game coming up here, uh, I think in October, if all goes well. So we'll just see how that goes. So as I mentioned, this is still in the original shrink wrap, amazingly, and I can hear the voices of a thousand uh, collectors screaming no uh, out there in the warp, but uh, we're going to open it anyway because we want to see what's inside. We want to show you guys what's inside. It's a game we've heard about for a long time, but haven't played yet. And actually, we have a couple of half-built Mordheim uh, warbands on the paint table right now. So this is a good excuse to go ahead and crack this open, see what's inside, and start planning our own forays into the city of Mordheim. So as most of you probably know, Mordheim is a tabletop skirmish war game released by Games Workshop back around 1999 and set in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Though roughly 500 years prior, to the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle rank and file game, as I understand it. So the premise of this game is that a comet descends from the sky and destroys the city of Mordheim and scatters this magical substance called Weirdstone all over the place. And I think Weirdstone and Warpstone are the same, essentially. And after the dust settles, various war bands from across the continent and across the world start descending on Mordheim to kind of pick through the bones and gather weird stone, and I assume other things. But along the way, they have to fight each other for the resources. So they're getting in there to try to get wealthy, but uh, other people want that weird stone too. So you have different factions like uh, Undead, the Possessed, Mercenaries, Skaven, uh, Sisters of Sigmar, I think, and Witch Hunters, I think, are another one. I think there's also lists for Orcs and um, Dwarf Treasure Hunters in one of the supplements. But anyway, you put together your war bands based on those lists, and you fight each other for uh, Weird Stone in the ruined city of Mordheim. And if that sounds a bit familiar, then yeah, it's pretty similar to uh, Frostgrave, where you have the uh, frozen city of Felstad, which is thawing out, and uh, wizards are going in with their war bands to collect magical artifacts and treasure and things like that. And Frostgrave, I think, came out around 2015, and I think the last vestiges of Mordheim, the last uh, digital products, were removed from the Games Workshop store about a year earlier, though from what I understand, from what I've read, official support for the product kind of ended around 2004, 2005. But up until that time, however, it seems like Mordheim was a pretty big deal for GW, and they were really pushing it. Here are a couple of issues of uh, White Dwarf magazine, for example, and this one says January, but this was actually mailed in December of 2019. So both of these issues each have a special section called the Town Crier, which is uh, sort of a mini newspaper within the magazine, devoted to Mordheim. So there's, uh, oh, I guess, uh, new war bands in here and special rules and uh, scenarios and things like that. So while Mordheim players can build pretty respectable war bands using just uh, old Warhammer Fantasy miniatures, GW did offer a line of dedicated Mordheim miniatures that kind of more closely aligned with the war bands featured in the rulebook. So here's an ad, for example, showing uh, the Sisters of Sigmar, some special characters, witch hunters, uh, special terrain, all that just for Mordheim. So here's issue 241. It's marked February, but this probably dropped in January of 2000. And uh, more witch hunters and undead and uh, dramatic persona and uh, hired swords and uh, some dwarves that don't look like they're um, probably Mordheim specific, but certainly could be used for Mordheim. Even the back cover art showed a Mordheim battle. So this is witch hunters versus the cult of the possessed. And I guess I forgot to show you this uh, Christmas issue actually has a special present for Mordheim fans inside. Here is a special cardstock reference card bound into the publication for playing games of Mordheim. And that's always super handy when they give you that. So you don't have to refer back to the book for every die roll. So we're going to be pulling that for sure when we start playing our games of Mordheim. As you saw in the ads from White Dwarf, there were uh, Mordheim specific miniatures. Well, here's a couple of uh, 
Skaven blister packs. So here's a couple of Skaven Night Runners. And here's a Skaven Assassin Master. And um, from what I know about Skaven, I have a few old uh, GW Skaven from back in the day. And these look different than the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Skaven that I have. So I'm going to assume that these are uh, dedicated miniatures just from Mordheim and didn't appear in regular Warhammer Fantasy sets. But I don't know if I'm wrong about that. Certainly leave a comment. So I love this. Uh, Games Workshop Blister Packs, three ninety nine. Of course, this was back in uh, 1999, I think. Yeah. If they were only still three ninety nine. If they were only three ninety nine. For the new ones, that would be awesome. I would have well, a lot more. <laughs> probably would. So the old blister packs, and we'll uh, probably be breaking these out of the package when we get around to making a Skaven Warband. We're not quite there yet. We're working on some different ones. Though I bet if I was to dig around downstairs a little bit, I could find uh, more than enough Skaven to make a pretty decent Mordheim Warband. So we'll have to look. But uh, anyway, we have these guys in reserve. So uh, that's a good start anyway. Okay, I guess the time has arrived to break this open. And I don't feel too badly about it because this is not a perfect box. There's already a hole in it here. But it is still in the shrink wrap. And there's even a price tag on here. So whether that says 159 or just 59, I'm not sure. But either way, I think you'd have to pay a little bit more now if you found one of these on eBay. Okay, well, I guess the time has come. Open says me. Yeah, there's a box knife right here. Okay, released from the confines of the shrink wrap after all these years. And let's take a moment to bask in the glory of this uh, bonkers artwork. We look at this box here. I see mercenaries. I see Skaven. I see what looks like a possessed. I don't know who this gentleman is or what he's all about, but he seems to be holding a pig encased in lucite, and the pig has a fish in his mouth. So while Frostgrave is kind of based around schools of magic, so each wizard has a school that they're very attuned to, and then uh, the further away they get from various schools, the less proficient they are in those spells. But Mordheim is kind of based around warbands. So you have each warband has various types of troops that they can hire. There's like hero classes and then henchman classes. So the Skaven here, for example, I'm going to assume that the Assassin Master is a hero. And the Night Runners, I'm not exactly sure, but they could be, for example, henchmen. So you would have a few heroes and uh, gr larger groups of henchmen. Depending on how much money you wanted to spend on building your warband, you usually have a set amount either uh, in your treasury or a set amount to start with, and you have to buy everything. There's swords and their helmets and uh, the troop types and all that. And then there's some limitations on... Uh, what you can buy, there's some things you have to have, and other things, there's like a numerical limit on how many you can have. So we will uh, learn more about that when we crack our book open. So I'd read online in a couple places that perhaps the Mordheim box set was not packed as well as it could have been, and so it's possible that stuff has moved around in here over the decades, and I hope we're not going to find any damage, so we'll hope for the best. But this is what we should be getting. We should be getting some terrain. I think this is the kind of cardstock terrain that fits together. We should be getting... 10 Skaven, 10 Mercenaries, a rule book, the City Ruins, that's that there, 6 Dice, and 2 Range Rulers. So, uh, let's see. Let's see what we got. Lynn, do you want to do the honors? Oh no, little tiny pieces. Little pieces in the box. What would a box set be from GWA without a bunch of gray plastic sprues? We have Mercenaries and Skaven. And here's some of the mercenary sprues. Now, if you didn't have the actual Mordheim mercenaries, a lot of the Warhammer Fantasy plastics, the swordsmen and the militia and stuff like that, could easily be used to proxy for uh, mercenary warbands. So there's a lot of options out there. So these guys are not as fancy as some of the Empire troops who have the big feathers and things. But uh, yeah, I guess this would be appropriate for people raiding a, uh, a comet-devastated uh, city it takes a special breed of man to fight a giant rat for a chunk of weird stone. I like the fact that Mordheim incorporates gunpowder weapons too, so you can have a mercenary captain with a, a brace of a flintlock pistols, or presumably a, a dwarf thunderer with a blunderbuss. We'll have to see in the rules if that's allowable. Skaven. Skaven. Skaven tails. Yeah, we have some really old uh, GW plastic Skaven, but they are pretty rudimentary compared to these guys. So a lot of special weapons, a lot of assassin weapons, I assume. And here's a sprue full of Ratman heads. So these must be the range rulers, I guess. They're really slim, though. They are slim, and the numbers are not terribly pronounced, but we'll have to try them out and see how they work. 
So I was assuming that the terrain would be 100% uh, cardstock, but it looks like we get some plastic elements and connectors as well. So it looks like these architectural elements here are designed to add a little more dimension to the cardstock buildings. We'll have to look at the instructions, but I'm going to assume that some of these are connectors to hold the cardstock together. When we actually build our Mordenheim mercenary and Skaven figures, we'll put them on round bases because that's what we're using for everything now. But the uh, set actually comes with a bunch of square bases, which is pretty consistent with uh, Warhammer Fantasy figures at that time. Well, I have to say so far, everything looks more or less intact. So that's a good sign. What's this? Quick start guide, perhaps? That's exactly what it is. Some instructions on assembling the minis. Here's a closer look at what the Mordheim Mercenary and Skaven miniatures look like when they're assembled. Assembling your buildings. The tavern, the bridge house. The bridge, the chimney, and the monument. That monument is actually pretty cool. So in addition to the quick start guide, the City of the Damned box set also comes with a nice glossy copy of the full Mordheim rulebook. Collecting a warband, painting your warband, modeling and converting. So it looks like Mordheim is designed to be kind of three-dimensional. So uh, they want you to have plank ways and stairways and second stories and things like that for your battles, which is pretty cool. So I look forward to digging into that and learning what all the fuss is about because I've been hearing about Mordheim for a long time and uh, had I had my wits about me back in the uh, late 90s, I would have picked up a copy, but I didn't do it. So here we are 20 years later and here's our buildings. They're nice and colorful. So these are cardstock, obviously, and at first someone might say, oh, cardstock. Oh, you know, we don't want cardstock. We want hard plastic. But since we've been building an awful lot of terrain lately, there's something kind of refreshing about having little cardstock buildings that we could just slap together and not have to uh, clean up and prime and paint and dry brush and seal. So yeah, I think I could learn to love uh, cardstock under certain circumstances simply because of the simplicity of uh, getting things on the board. So if somebody had purchased this, oh, here's a loose something or other. If somebody had purchased this with uh, hopes of playing the game uh, quickly, then they wouldn't have to mess around with the terrain too much. I could just put that together, get a little warband painted up, and they would be good to go. All right, so that is the contents of our uh, Mordheim City of the Damned uh, starter set. I'm glad we have some people painted already. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of painting, and frankly, I've been spending a lot of time getting stuff primed and uh, glued to bases. Uh, but I knew this was coming up, and so I actually have a couple of warbands sort of halfway done. I'm going to finish them up this month. So one thing that always concerns me a little bit when we uh, face a new rule set like this, particularly one with such a huge fan base, is that uh, we have the basic rules here, and we can certainly watch a few videos on YouTube, but I know there were supplements published. I know there's articles in White Dwarf, as well as many, many pages of FAQs and opinions and clarifications floating around on the internet that uh, we're probably not going to track down and try to sort through. So we're just going to uh, take the books that we have, sort of absorb them as best we can, and then however we play the game is how we play the game. We will play it and see what happens. Yeah, the tentacles and the tendrils of this thing have extended so far over the last 20 years, mostly thanks to the fans, that I don't think we'll ever get a full handle on it. But I think between the core rule book and a couple of articles we have in White Dwarf and maybe some online material that we can dig up, we should have more than enough to uh, have a pretty good adventure in the city of Mordheim. So, Lynn, are you up for uh, playing some uh, green skins, some orcs and goblins in the city of Mordheim? Of course. Because you've already painted a whole bunch of them. I have. You have uh, squigs and uh, squig herders and night goblins and uh, orcs and all kinds of stuff. I also have a lot of dwarves. Yeah, you have. We have dwarves all over the place. Unfortunately, this uh, one issue white dwarf here from uh, February 2000 has an article on uh, dwarf treasure hunters in uh, Mordheim. So we could definitely do that as well. And we can keep the uh, goblins and orcs in reserve because we might need a third warband at some point. I'm actually working on an undead warband right now, and that's about half finished. But uh, if folks out there saw our last video, we have a bunch of uh, Chaos Warriors from the mid-1980s. And so maybe if I get super productive, I can make a possessed warband and an undead warband and have a couple of options too. So we'll see how that goes.
However, I'm very tempted to start pulling some of these rat men and these mercenaries off these sprues, but I'm going to wait till after we get through our current uh, miniature painting frenzy that we need to get finished. So I will work on what I have on my table and then uh, save these guys for another day. But a lot of these uh, old plastic uh, mercenaries and Skaven are pretty cool. And some of these models I haven't seen before. So I think I want to steal some of them when we start putting together our uh, Skaven uh, warband whenever that time comes. All right, well folks, that is our big unboxing of the uh, classic Mordheim City the Dam box set from uh, 2002, I think, even though the game came out in uh, 1999 or thereabouts. Okay, Lynn, now that you've seen it, what do you think of Mordheim? I'm ready to get some miniatures out and start playing. Okay, well, we have the rest of September to finish up, and I think I can do that, at least get a couple of war bands ready for the table, and then we'll play ourselves some Mordheim. Okay, folks, well, stay tuned for that, and in the meantime, as always, thank you very much for stopping by. If you like the things we do here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, please visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.